The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. You see, God don't change. He is the same before today and tomorrow and forever after. Beyond anything we can understand, so it's standing before the Lord and giving an account for we are judged by our deeds, by our actions. Because if you go into your book of Revelation, when the books are open, because everyone has a book, you are judged by your works. And that word is interchangeable with deeds and actions. And again in Revelation, when it speaks, Unblessed are those who die in the Lord from henceforth, for they can rest from their labors, that's things they do, and their works do follow them. So second, again with works. You see, Jesus tells you to glorify your Father by your works. That again goes back to the word deeds and actions. The things we do, who we are, our character, our behavior. You see, people don't want to consider. They just want to live as they want to live and do as they want to do, but not consider. We need to take very seriously this walk with the Lord. Because I am seeing those that actually are speaking dead set against the book of James where he actually explains it and then you'll notice before James is the book of Hebrews so that these two are purposely next to each other in your Bible because God knows every argument that was ever going to come in this day and age and any other age there's been before us and after us because God knows better than any one of us because God doesn't change and he's always said for obedience to follow him to love one another as yourselves to do unto others as you would unto yourselves to treat everyone the way you want to be treated to be the light in a dark world to have no part of evil to abstain from every form of wickedness he had set his people to be set apart you see when that great and terrible day of the lord people need to be prepared for when that day comes because just as jesus warns will he find faith when he comes back and again, as you see, there will be a perilous time, a terrible time that's never been upon the earth, that's never been seen before and never shall again. That means this time that is still yet to come will be worse than Genesis 6 when it tells you about all the Nephilim, the giants. Not only were the Nephilim upon the world and all lawlessness and all violence was standardized, it was a lawless era, a lawless time. During that time, when the people could no longer feed the Nephilim with food, the Nephilim ate the people. And you're looking at it in the day and age where they're starting to normalize exactly that for you and I and for us to be it. Do you understand? A time that will be worse than anything that's ever been in history so far. The time that comes will be worse. It's that preparation, that understanding. Because there will be a falling away and it says that many will fall away. And they will hate one another, be offended and betray one another. Think of the Judases. This terrible time that's going to come. People are going to see so many terrible things. They're going to be so shocked by all these various terrible things that they'll be offended, be like, oh, the world is so bad. And they'll be the mockers and scoffers saying, well, where's Jesus? But that's the thing, it's a perilous time. You're going to be in the storm. So be prepared for it. Walk with the Lord, stand close to him. For all who shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So keep calling on him. Because these terrible things, don't be surprised, but be prepared. Because Malachi 3.6 For I am the Lord, I change not, therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You need to stay with the Lord. Because those that depart from him, they go off into their own ways, just as the stiff-necked. And the people don't come to him in love and in compassion. Remember, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. With all these things that will be happening, you're not going to be surprised. So you're going to stay with the Lord. Because when he comes, and what a great and terrible day it will be, because Malachi 4, 5, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. The great and terrible day that will come. And we're waiting for that great and terrible day. And as Jesus says, will he find faith? And he says, pray to be accounted worthy to escape the things that are to come. You see, we have to put the Lord first and learn from him. Because I see a lot of people coming with all sorts of opinions and beliefs on all sorts of different things. And people like to believe what they want to believe. And some like to tickle the ear. And some only look for those that will tickle their ears. 
ear tickling is not a godly thing. Deception is deception and many false prophets will grow and come up and they'll be left, right and center. They'll be all over the place because there will be so many of them. But you need to stay in your Bibles, in the word, not in the world. So stand strong in the Lord because when Revelation warns you about the two witnesses, when they come, then you see a whole host of opinions on this one. Dear, oh dear, there are many. But what does it tell you in verse 3 of chapter 11, book of Revelation? And I will give power unto my two witnesses. So that tells you how many there are, so you know how many, so you can't be confused by numbers. My two witnesses, and they shall prophesy. So two people shall prophesy a thousand, two hundred, and threescore days clothed in sackcloth. So that tells you what they wear as well, just in case you ain't sure what they're wearing while they're doing this. So this is how long they're there, this is what they wear, and this is how many there are that do it. And then it tells you what they do. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. Anyone that tries to hurt them, this is how they die that try to hurt them. These have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. Now go back to Old Testament, or if you need to, come across into New Testament where it talks about righteous and holy when he shut up the reins during the times of King Ahab and wicked King Jezebel. So when King Ahab and Queen Jezebel, who did you have? Well, that's right, it's Elijah. Talks of Elijah. Two witnesses before the great and terrible day of the Lord. And you see this coming. Now remember, when the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, he's going to be devouring with the breath of his mouth. All utter destruction unto the beast and the false prophet. So what do they have? They have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy, and have power over waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. So it's telling you exactly what they can do, how they will do it, and what will happen after they've done it, when they finish their testimony. So once they've done during those days, and that's how long it lasts, their days of doing this, the beast that ascendeth out the bottomless pit shall make war with them. So he will come to war with them, and he'll overcome them, and he will kill them, so they will die. Now what else does it say? And their dead bodies, and that tells you their dead bodies. These two people dressed in sackcloth and ashes, their bodies, shall lie in the street of the great city. So it's a specific city, not all cities, every city. The great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. So now you know where it was, the specific place they will be, where their bodies will specifically be. Because that's now telling you that their bodies are going to be where he was crucified. And you already know where Jesus was crucified, Golgotha, place of the skull. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. So three and a half days, these bodies are there, so you can see them. And shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. So they're going to leave them there. They're not even going to let them be buried or anything. They'll just be left there for three and a half days on purpose by the people. And what will they do? And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice. So the people on the earth are going to be happy during this. They're going to be rejoicing over them and make merry so they'll be celebrating because of this and they're going to send gifts one to another so they're going to give gifts to each other celebrate specifically on this event these two pro prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth and that's why they're going to be celebrating this and after three days and a half the spirit of life from god entered into them and they stood upon their feet, and great fear pull upon them which saw them. So there's going to be fear upon all that see it, when they stand upon their feet after three and a half days of being dead. They rise again, and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake. Now you know what that great earthquake's about. And the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake was slain of men 7,000. So now you know how many people are going to be slain by this specific earthquake. Because it tells you the number. You see? It tells you they will rise again after three and a half days. 
that they will be seen rising again. People will be celebrating during this time. Two people in sackcloth and ashes, how long they prophesy and the power they have and the things they do as they prophesy and how the people that come against them will be devoured by fire. It's all specifics. Remember when fire was cooled down while he was upon the mountain and the soldiers were there at the bottom of it coming to take him and each troop that would come, fire would come around and devour them. Or when he called upon the Lord and the altar was lit. The second woe was past and behold the third woe cometh quickly. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. When they rise up and ascendeth, the whole world is going to see the failure of the beast, the Antichrist. He hasn't got the power to raise the dead to life. Only God does. Remember, Antichrist is instead of. It's false. It's deception. Don't be following the Antichrist when he comes. There will be those that aren't stood in their word in the Bible and don't understand these things, so know them and learn them. There will be judgment upon this earth. And as Jesus said, will faith be found in that great and terrible day of the Lord? And you know this world is led astray. As Revelation 18.23, all nations led astray by rich and powerful merchants as traders. They deceived the world with sorcery, pharmacia. Strong's 5331 and Strong's 5332. When you know these things, you're not surprised. And as Daniel 243 says, iron and clay do not mix, but neither does it mix in the seed of men. And we're in the day and age where they're bringing this fourth industrial revolution, where they want people to be their technology and technology to be people. And when you know it, you can't unknow it. And you know all the people, they're terrified of all these things for they're not with God so it's trying to preach the word to bring them to the Lord because we're in a day and age just as Daniel 8 12 we're starting to see truth thrown to the ground and that's only going to continue it's only going to get worse this world of wokery this world full of deception and feelings and emotions instead of truth or what a person says is their truth but their truth counts for nothing it's only what is true counts for anything what is truth? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Pontius Pilate asked him, what is truth? Do not forget it. Because we're in a day and age where those in power put lies for truth. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes, bitter for sweet, evil for good, good for evil, sweet for bitter. All these wicked things, Isaiah 5.20. Jesus gives you the warnings in Matthew 24 and the signs to see for the end. All the things that will compass and happen. And you got all them signs, all those things happening. In a day and age where a statue will be given power to move and speak. And those that won't worship it, that statue is given authority to put to death those that won't worship it. You know how far technology has advanced. A statue, a thing made by a man's hand. Well, we live in a day and age where things made by a man's hands can both move and speak and progress images upon them. You shouldn't be surprised by anything. Now none are to worship this beast or his statue nor take his name or his mark. It's a branding and a submission unto evil and unto wickedness. So stand steadfast because all of this chaos and mayhem and now they speak but they can now put a patch on you that leaves an invisible mark do you remember when it began with 6.66 ml of luciferase? Do you understand? Well, we're told not to fear what the world fears. Instead, fear God and not men. You see, your body's bought for a price. It's the blood of Christ that paid for it. Your bodies are not your own. And your body is the temple for the Holy Spirit. So do not defile it. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't take from the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. No better, do better. Abstain from every form of evil and give no opportunity for the devil in your life. Have no part of the unfruitful works of darkness. Instead, expose them, redeeming the time, being wise, for the days are evil. Love everyone as yourself. Treat them as you want to be treated, regardless of how they treat you. Overcome with good. Do not be overcome by evil. And do not repay evil with evil. Never give a curse, but always a blessing. Do not let anyone deceive you and do not continue 
and normalize and accept sin. Stand up against it. So live as a pleasable and acceptable living sacrifice unto the Lord. To be renewed in mind and spirit daily. To seek God's wisdom and His strength and His instructions daily. To be encouraged in His word daily. We have to stay close to God and not this world and its wicked ways. Be prepared for all the things that are coming and are to be done. Do not fear, but stand steadfast in the storm. Jesus has already overcome this world. This world is but failing. Don't let them normalize to you their wickedness. Walk in the peace of the Lord and pray for peace, for safety, so that you can live in all godliness where you be, so you can shine as the light in the dark in the places you reside. Because there is much darkness yet still to come. Don't let anyone force you to follow after false Christs. Oh, he's here, he's there, do not go. Remember, the eagles are there for the carcass. Don't be deceived. The day and age where truth is thrown to the ground, all forms of lies are going to be grown and normalized and watered by those in power and authority. So pray for eyes to see and ears to hear. Pray for strength to walk upon the narrow path so you don't fall upon the wide. For many will seek it and hunger for it because it's easier. Be prepared for all the devastation this world will go through because of wicked people and wicked positions. For those who try to destroy the world, as Revelation doth warn. All of this that you see today are just stepping stones for something far darker, far more wicked for those that try to destroy the world. Be prepared, endure, persevere, and overcome in Christ. Don't succumb to all this wickedness and craziness. Be renewed in mind and spirit and seek the Lord when you feel tired and weary. Be strengthened in Christ. Stand steadfast to the end. God bless each and every one of you. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous, boastful, proud, blasphemous. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved? if you're not willing to repent. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.